Shalom Aleichem, my friends. We will share with you a few thoughts about the parasha of this coming Shabbat, Parashat Vaishlach. Everybody knows the story that Yaakov Avinu, now after spending so many years by Lavan, trying to avoid the, the, the possibility of having any confrontation with his brother Esav, who has sworn to kill him, because apparently he took from him the birthright, as well as the blessing of his father Yitzchak. So now, Yaakov Avinu, after he married Leah and Rachel, and he has children, and thank God he is great opulence, very rich. So he's coming now, he wants to meet Esav. I mean, why? Because he wants to finish with this possibility of uh, resentment between him and Esav. Maybe there is a possibility to solve the problem or to solve it either way, either from the ways of, uh, in, in ways of peace or uh, maybe even uh, to solve the problem between him and Esav with a war. So let us go into the parasha. The parasha says, And Yaakov sent messengers, Malachim, which usually known in the modern vernacular of the Hebrew, we know that Malach is an angel. But the literal meaning here means an emissary, a messenger. So that's the literal meaning of this verse. And, and Yaakov sent messengers ahead of Esav, I mean ahead of him to his brother Esav, and he instructed them to deliver the message. The message was that he turns to Esav with a very humble way. He says, Koto merun la doni le Esav, my Lord Esav, your humble servant Yaakov says, Im lavan garti, ko amar avdecha Yaakov, im lavan garti vaichar adata. I have lived with Lavan, and now, and I, for such a long time, vaichar. That's why I couldn't see you for such a long time, which means he's, he's excusing himself for not coming to see his brother Esav as though there is no problem between them. But it is a very nice way how to confront his brother Esav. So he sent these emissaries. There's only one problem, that Rashi, in his commentary, he says, Malachim Mamash, which means don't make any mistake thinking that these are messengers, human beings. We're talking here about real angels. Mamash means in reality. We have to understand that because we are human beings. We don't know anything about the spiritual and angels are spiritual. So what did he send really? The second question is why is it that Yaakov is preparing himself to speak with such humble way? What about your uh, pride? He cannot face Esav with, like a, a slave towards him and calling him eight times in the Torah by the term, My Lord, I am your hum humble servant. I mean, he's, he's his brother. Almost twin brothers, right? So why is he humbling himself so much? The Ramban is telling us that the Jewish people should look upon the ways of Yaakov, our father, because it should serve to us as a guide in our life to know how to deal with the world surrounding us. We know that the Jewish people was meant to be surrounded by all the nations. Like our sages said, Shivim Ze'evim, there are 70 wolves surrounding the little lamb that is the Jewish people. Yes, indeed, 
for all the generations that the, the nations have been harassing us in every way, whether it is coming from uh, Christianity or from uh, Islam, we were all the time persecuted by them. So we had to learn sometimes the easy way, sometimes the hard way, how to deal with that. Our sages said that this world is not, does not belong to the Jewish people. What has been given to the Jewish people is the world to come, the eternal world. But this world, we live in it, of course. We have no right of existence in this world, apparently. So how do we survive? Our sages said we survive because God gave us 613 commandments. Each one of those commandments will serve as a protector for the Jew. So we have 613 uh, protective ways that uh, assure our existence. Despite the fact that we have suffered, but we are still here and we exist, which is a miracle, what caused us to survive until today? The mitzvot that God gave us, the commandments that God gave us which is the reason why God gave 613 plus 7 mitzvot of Rabbanan versus only 7 commandments toward the, for the other nations. Why so much? Because the other nations really do not need those commandments. This world is their world. It was given to Esav, no? By his father Yitzchak. But when it comes to Yaakov, we are living by the favor of the nations because this world is not ours. As it says in the Talmud, Kol Yisrael helek Every Jew has a share in the world to come. What is the world to come? Not this world. The other, the world, the spiritual world. Nevertheless, we, should, we, we do live in this world. The only way for us to, to observe the commandments is to live in this world, right? Remember what the Talmud says in Masechet Shabbat on page 89? That even the angels did not understand why the Torah comes down here. Until Moshe explained to them. The Torah means the commandments. And you have nothing to do with the commandments. But the Jewish people receives these commandments so that they will be able to survive in this world. Okay? So now we understand that the mitzvot are a sort, a kind of angel. Every mitzvah. It says so in Pirkei Avot, in the book of the fathers, chapter 4. It says, Ha'oseh mitzvah ahad konelo praklit ahad. You observe one mitzvah, one commandment, you already got a praklit. What is praklit? A lawyer. Something to protect you. Someone to, to be on your side. And uh, the commentators explain that this, uh, this person is not a lawyer, it's, he's rather an angel. Melitze zchut, those who bring good things and favor in the eyes of God from the Jewish people. Now we can go back to our parasha. Vayishlach Yaakov malachim, and Yaakov sent messengers, but these messengers, Rashi says, Real Malachim, real angels. And this has to be explained somehow. We are human. I mean, we are physical. We, we know nothing about the spiritual. So how do we contend with this saying that yeah, he, our father Jacob sent towards his father, his brother Esav, to Malachim, angels, real angels, mamash. Uh, by the way, one of the greatest fathers of the Hasidim, Rabbi Meir Miper Mishlan, explained that mamash, which means in reality, is also an acronym, which means Malachim Mim Mitzvot She'asa. Malachim begins with Mem, that's the first Mem of mamash. Then the second, the second, uh, the second uh, Mem of mamash goes for mim mitzvot and the sheen of mamash got she'asa, which means the angels that are created from the mitzvot that we observe. 
so every mitzvah, every commandment that we observe becomes an angel for us. So based on that, we are going to learn together a little piece of the Zohar Kadosh, the Holy Zohar. On this parasha, the beginning of this parasha. And it says there, I'm going to tell you this uh, somehow in general. We don't have to, to read it word by word. The Zohar says that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who wrote the Zohar, with his students or uh, fellow colleagues, they, they, they explained a certain verse in the book of Psalms, King David writes that God has prepared two angels for each Jew to protect him in all his ways. Okay, so Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai explains what are the, those uh, angels. So he says, When a human being comes to this world, when he is born, when he comes out from the womb, of his mother. Miyad is the man behadehi etzerara. Immediately the evil inclination penetrates into him. That's one power. That's one angel. Angel of evil. The Zohar goes on and says, now this evil inclination is going to cause the human being to do everything that is wrong, that is bad. Like it says in the Torah, la petach hatat From the, the, the entrance to this world, I mean from the, the minute he comes out from, to this world, the human being is ready already to do evil. That's the power of Satan, the power of the evil inclination which is older than the human being. Like King Solomon said, melech zaken uchsil, that the evil inclination is considered to be a king, an old man, and also he makes you become stupid. As our sages said, in Adam over Avera, Ela imken One does not bring himself to commit a sin until he is he lost his mind for a minute or two. That's the way how our sages look upon this situation. Now the evil inclination is one angel, right? For the negative. And he is created immediately to the, by the human being as soon as he comes to this world. But we have a second power, a second angel that has to invade and penetrate the system of the human being. That is the good one, right? Yetzer Hatov, the good inclination. But the Zohar has an explosive information for us. He says, while the evil inclination begins with the human being from the first day of his life in this world, the good inclination does not come and penetrate into the, the human body until he is 13. Because we're talking about the Jewish people. The rest of the world is also included because of other reasons, but that's something else. The Jewish people they have the tradition to do bar mitzvah at the age of 13. That's the day when the child begins to observe the commandments, as we know. Who gave us this information for 13 years of age? Well, the source is this Zohar. This Zohar says, the Zohar was written close to, to 1900 years ago, written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and he says, that at the age of 13, that's the time when the good inclination penetrates into the human body. And why? Because on that day, he is purifying himself through the, the observance of the mitzvot, of the commandments. Wonderful. So now we know that why, by the way, why is it that the evil inclination is so much stronger than the good infl inclination? Why? Because the evil inclination he has more experience. He is older, he practically masters, he is the, the boss of the whole body, and he pertains to this world. Whereas the good inclination has a big job to do, and not always does he win. 
Our sages said, Lulea Kadosh Baruch Hu Eno Yacholo. Even God Himself admits that if it was not for the help of God, that if He does not help us, it would be impossible to conquer the, the evil inclination. It would be impossible to win over Him. If we overcome many times, hopefully, the, uh, and we do the good rather than doing the bad, it's only because God helps us. That's it. So, that's the point. Now, going back to the story of, of Yaakov. Yaakov wants to meet Esav. Now, he has several ways. First, he sends the two messengers. We're saying, we're talking about two angels. One is the evil inclination. One is the good inclination. Let us explain that our way. What does it mean that he sent uh, his two inclinations? It means that Yaakov Avinu was thinking, what, how should I proceed before I meet my brother Esav? First inclination comes first. What comes to his mind first? Listen, Yaakov says, I am very strong. Remember, we read in the past parashiot in the Torah that Yaakov was capable of demonstrating a tremendous Herculean power when he came, for example, to meet Rachel, when she was coming with her, uh, uh, you know, when she was a shepherdess. And before he saw her, when he learned that she is about to arrive, he came to all the shepherds there, sitting around a well, and the well itself was completely uh, closed by a huge and gigantic stone. So he said to them, what are, you to, what are you doing here? I mean, the day is still very, very much. You have to go to work. Why are you sitting here? They said, we cannot. We are waiting for all our brothers to come so that we can lift up the stone and thus we can give uh, the animals uh, to drink and then we can go on. So Yaakov, when he saw that, what does it say in the Torah? By Gali Yaakov et Even, he himself came and he lifted the stone from the well. He uncovered the well by himself. Our sages said, like a, like a, uh, like a cork from the bottle. And that testifies to the fact that Yaakov, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham was endowed with a tremendous physical power. Having this kind of power, Yaakov immediately with his first inclination, his instinct is telling him, why should I be afraid? I'll go towards my brother Esav. If he wants war, I can take care of him. I am very strong. I can kill him. But then the good inclination came to him. He said, hold it, Yaakov. What's better, to go and destroy or perhaps to solve the problem with the ways of peace, peaceful ways? So Yaakov sits down and he says, yes, indeed. And by the way, the Ramban says that from this we have to learn, the Jewish people has to learn how to guide their life according to the way Yaakov behaves. Yaakov did not go immediately to fight. First, he prepared himself in three ways. Number one, Doron, our sages said. He said, let me prepare a nice gift for my brother Esav. Doron in Hebrew means matana, a gift. It was a very big gift that he prepared to give to his brother Esav. Many goats and cows and bulls and, uh, and lambs. All this was to be given to Esav, perhaps. It will quiet his heart. After so many years we didn't see each other, it is possible that he changed his mind. And with this kind of gift, everything will become fine and maybe we will hug and love each other as we are brothers, right? But he says, this is not enough. I still have to pray. The second preparation was tefillah preparing, I mean, praying to God. And he said to Hashem, Atzileni nam yad ahim yad 
save me, my Lord, from my brother, from Esav. Why is it that the Torah is so redundant? Your brother is Esav, why do you have to say, my brother, Esav? So the explanation is, God first, he doesn't know how Esav is going to behave towards him. Is he going to be, uh, uh, behave towards him as a brother that he is? Or maybe as a Esav, that means his natural enemy. So he turns to God, help me God, and save me from these two possibilities. First possibility, he's my brother. And even if I succeed to kill him, it's not. It's a big loss for me. I don't want to kill my brother. Number two, it is possible that he will be also. He is also endowed with a great physical power, so he might uh, kill me. And that's the reason why the Torah says in this parasha, "Vayira Yaakov meod vayetzerlo." Yaakov was very much in fear and sad. Why the two feelings here are described? So tell us, he, he feared the possibility that maybe he will be killed by Esav. Esav is also very strong. Or maybe, and that made him very sad, maybe he will have to kill his brother Esav. Either way, it's not a good way for him. So he prayed to God. So those are the two ways how he prepared himself, which tell us, the Jewish people, how to behave also in life. First, we have to buy our passage in this world by giving gifts. Yes, that's how the, in the history of the Jewish people, the Jewish people survive, survived primarily from by giving gifts to all the governments, to all the royalties, and so forth. That's how they, they were uh, saved many times. Because of bribes, gifts. And many stories about that. The third possibility that uh, Yaakov prepared himself is Milchama. If Esav is coming to fight me, I will have to fight him, to fight him, right? He has to defend himself. That's the way of the Jewish people. The Jewish people never goes ahead to destroy a nation or something. But the Jewish people will, when they have the means of protection, they will have to protect themselves, right? Defend themselves. Uh, today, thank God, we have returned to the land of Israel and we have a marvelous army May God bless it forever. And, you know, our army is, is, is known as Tzva Haganah Israel, Tzahal. The, the army of peace, the, the army that defends forces of Israel. It's not called an army for attacking, only defending. It's only for defense. That's the way the Jewish people should behave. We should always try to start with peaceful ways. Maybe we can buy our life through gifts and friendship and peace. If not, we pray to God. That's why we pray three times a day. Shachrit, Mincha and Arvit. Finally, if there is no other choice, then, of course, we prepare ourselves also to war. Today, thank God, the Jewish people has a great army and with the help of God, it is a, a, an army that wins that is victorious in everything, may it be so always. But still the Jewish people prefers the ways of peace. And that's what we see in Yaakov Avinu. That's what he did. So we have explained according to the Zohar Kadosh what could be the possible explanation of those two angels, which means Yaakov Avinu was thinking how to proceed towards the meeting with his brother Esav. The first instinct was to go and fight, but then the second, the good instinct came and tells him, no, take it easy, Yaakov. Choose the best way. The best way is peace. Number one, peace. Second, praying. And then if there is no choice, then you have to fight. So we are going to conclude with this uh, little Zohar that we have uh, studied together. And let's wish to everyone that uh, the Jewish people will finally come to the days of total peace with its neighbors, peace with the nations, that there will be no more anti-Semitism, this hatred that has absolutely no, no logic, but it gives us a hint that we are special people but we don't want to be special, we want to be 
in peace and at peace. May it may it be it, it, it will be so, and that's why we pray every day in the in the in the morning prayer. We have what we call Birkat Kohanim, which ended the Samuel Shemi Al Bene Israel Vani Avarechem. Shalom. Shalom is peace, but it's also the name of God, which means to obtain peace for the Jewish people to obtain peace from all the world, you have to turn to God. Our sages said that, that Shalom is one of the names of God. Shalom, which means peace, is the name of God. O say Shalom bim Romav, who ya say Shalom alenu. Amen. The one who makes peace in the heavens, we pray that he should make peace also for the Jewish people with all the nations of the world so we don't have to fight anyone. Let's hope that we will cease, maybe in our days, these days of peace and joy and happiness for you, for us, for all the people of Israel. Amen.